Four-engine heavy bombers became central to the total war experienced in 1939 to 1945, allowing for the implementation of increasingly destructive strategic bombing. First employed by the Luftwaffe during the invasion of Poland, strategic bombing was soon adopted by the Allies as it became integral to the long-range combat necessary in the years prior to D-Day. Here are the list of 10 most successful bombers in World War II. Lockheed PV-1 Ventura Lockheed manufactured the first PV-1 Venturas in 1941 for use in England. By mid-1942, half a year after America entered the war, the U.S. Navy needed its own land-based heavy bomber capable of flying long distances with heavy ordnance loads. The Navy ordered the manufacture of its own PV-1 Venturas, which had a range of 1,360 miles and could carry 3,000 pounds of bombs or anti-submarine depth charges. The PV-1 bomber, which also bore four guns, flew successful missions throughout the war. North American B-25 Mitchell One of the best-known airplanes of World War II with the B-25 bomber was also one of the most flown, most versatile, and most successful of all the combat planes of the era. The B-25 bomber was designed and built by North American Aviation beginning in 1939, and it was used throughout the war for the bombing, photo reconnaissance, submarine patrol, fighting, and strafing attacking ground troops from a low altitude. Sixteen of these twin-engine bombers famously flew in the Tokyo Raid of April 18, 1942, the U.S. counterattack on the Japanese four months after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Dauntless SBD Dauntless During all of the major Pacific campaigns of World War II, including the battles at Coral Sea, Guadalcanal, and Midway, this Navy ship-borne dive bomber was perhaps more successful than any other aircraft. SBD Dauntless fleets destroyed 18 enemy warships in all, helping to turn the tide of the Pacific War in favor of the Allies. The plane's dive capability was facilitated by special Swiss cheese flaps, dive brakes perforated with 3-inch holes, which allowed the planes to pull out of near-vertical dives after releasing bombs. Curtis SB2C Helldiver The SB2C Helldiver design is a sleeker version of the SBD Dauntless, went into action for the first time in November 1943. Though impressive looking, this bomber handled poorly especially in high-speed dives, and it was prone to dangerous stalls. Even so, when the Helldiver entered the Navy fleet, it replaced the SBD Dauntless and remained the sole carrier-based Navy dive bomber from late 1944 until the war ended in 1945, managing to inflict significant damage on enemy targets. Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress Having served in every World War II combat zone, the B-17 Flying Fortress is one of the most famous military airplanes. The Japanese dubbed these army planes, which carried 9,600 pounds of ordnance and 530 caliber mounted machine guns, four-engine fighters. But their Flying Fortress moniker best describes their brute power and endurance capabilities. The fortresses could stay in the air even after the most vicious attacks, often flying back to their bases with large chunks of fuselage missing. Martin B-26 Marauder Marauders began flying combat missions in the Southwest Pacific in 1942, three years into World War II, but most of them were used in earlier combat by American, British, French, Australian, South African, and Canadian forces over England and the Mediterranean. The Marauder dropped his bombs, up to 4,000 pounds worth, from medium altitudes of 10,000 to 15,000 feet, and had the lowest loss rate of any Allied bomber, less than one half of 1%. The Consolidated B-24 Liberator The U.S. Air Force employed the giant four-engine Consolidated Aircraft B-24 bomber in every combat theater during World War II, from Europe to the Pacific Ocean to North Africa. Because of the B-24's great range of 2,850 miles, it was particularly suited for long missions over the Pacific. Fully loaded, a B-24 could carry more than four tons of bombs. Douglas A-20 Havoc like many World War II airplanes, the Douglas A-20 Havoc was a multitasking craft capable of carrying out bombing missions from high and low altitudes and performing light transport, photo reconnaissance, nighttime fighting, and torpedo-carrying missions. The A-20 also functioned as a fighter when needed, requiring only slight modifications to fly with guns. Unlike most twin-engine bombers, the A-20 did not require a co-pilot. A single pilot occupied the plane's narrow cockpit. The Grumman TBF Avenger 
Considered ugly by some airplane aficionados, Grumman's stocky TBF Avenger first took to the skies in June 1942 against Japanese carriers during the Battle of Midway and remained the only carrier-based Navy torpedo aircraft in service through the end of the war. Grumman Avengers had many successes during the war, the most famous of which was the sinking of the heaviest warship in the world, the Japanese battleship Yamato at Okinawa on April 7, 1945. The Boeing B-29 Superfortress Like the consolidated B-24, the Boeing B-29's range of 3,700 miles meant that it was suited to the long sorties required to attack Japan from bases in China. A group of 45 B-29 Superfortresses at a time attacked Tokyo, destroying large swaths of the city. On August 6, 1945, the B-29 Enola Gay dropped the world's first atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Three days later, a second B-29 boxcar dropped a second atomic bomb on Nagasaki. As a result, on August 14, 1945, the world learned that Japan had surrendered, effectively ending World War II, a war that Americans thought would go on indefinitely. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.